Okay, thank you. Um, this is uh, brand new for me. I give a lot of speeches, but I've never given a speech in the round. And uh, I'm also tied a bit to my computer, uh, but I'm facing this way, so now it's your turn <laughs> to be in the back. <laughs> However, I do have my clicker, and um, we'll see how it works if I wander around a bit, but uh, I think it's optical and it has to be pointed directly at it. So, so I have um, a, a lot to say today uh, that really follows a lot from what uh, Lord Putnam has said. Um, and one of the things that I want to say at the outset to, to put a lot of this into context is to think about how uh, traditional formal education uh, and the, the, the total quantity of it doesn't seem to be undergoing any remarkable shift, I don't think, anywhere in the world. Um, obviously, uh, in, in many places in the developing world, schools are improving. In some places, they are not, and uh, getting worse in some places. Uh, but in, in general, we're not seeing any kind of a quantum leap. There, there's no massive change there. But where we are seeing a really massive change all around the world is in the quantity and type and style of informal learning. Uh, and the internet is really at the core of that. Um, so, today what I'm going to talk about uh, is, is that and several other things, and whoops. Um, in, in general, my work is all about the, free, uh, the dream of free knowledge for everyone. Uh, the basic concept behind Wikipedia is uh, for us to all imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. Uh, that's what we're doing at Wikipedia. Um, as was said, I assume uh, essentially everyone in this room will have used Wikipedia. Um, if not, you're a little bit behind the curve in terms of education. Uh, there's something interesting going on out there. Uh, but how many people here have actually edited Wikipedia? I think that's an interesting question as well. So quite a few, quite a few. Um, I was just recently in uh, India and I spoke at IIT uh, Mumbai or IIT Bombay, I think they haven't changed the name of the university yet, even though they changed the name of the city to Mumbai. Uh, and I would say about 80% of the students there had edited Wikipedia, who I asked, and this was like 3,000 kids in an audience. Now keep in mind, these are uh, super geeky kids at a very elite university in India, in engineering for the most part, um, so they are tech savvy. But I think it does tell you something about the engagement of people, uh, particularly young people all around the world, in the project of Wikipedia. In 1962, Charles Van Doren, who was later a senior editor at Britannica, said, the ideal encyclopedia should be radical. It should stop being safe. But if you know anything about the history of Britannica since 1962, it's been anything but radical. It's still a very safe, old-fashioned, uh, very high-quality encyclopedia project. Uh, Wikipedia, on the other hand, is, of course, quite radical. Um, when we think about what Wikipedia is, Wikipedia is a freely licensed encyclopedia written by thousands of volunteers from all over the world. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, detail that is worth considering because it's very, very important to understanding the mission of Wikipedia. When I talk about what is free access, I'm not talking about uh, just the cost of Wikipedia. Uh, we come from the open source software world, the free software world, uh, where we have an old joke, uh, we say, uh, we're talking about free as in speech, not free as in beer. So free beer is great. You know, somebody gives you free beer, you drink it. Uh, but we're talking about something a little bit more fundamental. It doesn't cost you anything to, to uh, read Wikipedia, but additionally, it's released under a free license, which means that you have the right to copy it, to modify it, to redistribute it, to redistribute modified versions. And you can do all of these things commercially or non-commercially. So what this means is that when people are contributing to Wikipedia, they aren't just contributing to this one humanitarian charitable project. They're contributing to a storehouse of knowledge that other people can adapt and change and modify, translate into other languages, for example, for whatever purposes they may have, and they don't have to ask our permission to do it. And this has meant a lot of really interesting things have been going on all around the world having to do with Wikipedia. When I talk about the sum of all human knowledge, what do I mean by that? Well. Um, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Um, it's not every kind of book in the world. It isn't everything. Uh, Wikipedia is not an archive. Wikipedia is not a library. I think from the perspective of thinking about education and the role that Wikipedia plays in education all around the world, um, it's also important to note that Wikipedia is not a textbook. 
It is not really designed to guide a student through that step-by-step -step process of learning, which in many fields is quite necessary. It can be an adjunct to a textbook, it can be an adjunct to other learning experiences, but it might be quite difficult, for some topics anyway, to go from zero to everything you need to know about that topic just using Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not YouTube. We don't have funny cat videos. Um, I love funny cat videos, but we're quite serious as a project. Uh, and the community is quite serious about keeping Wikipedia quite serious. Uh, we're not a social network. We're not MySpace. We're not Facebook. Uh, so for me, an encyclopedia offers an essentialized summary of human knowledge with the depth of the material depending on the context. That definition helps us to, to comprehend what Wikipedia should be about um, and what it shouldn't. So, the next thing, which I think a lot more people know today than they knew just a few months ago because everybody's sick and tired of seeing my face all over the website <laughs> begging for money, um, but Wikipedia is a charity. So we are a nonprofit organization. We exist primarily uh, from the donations from the general public. Uh, we just finished our fundraiser. Uh, we raised $16 million, which was our goal. Uh, we actually went a little bit over, which is good news. And our Budget for the coming year is $20.1 million. Um, and so we have, well now, my slide's a little bit out of date, we have uh, around 50 employees now. Um, and so this is 50 employees um, who are responsible for maintaining Wikipedia, keeping it on the air, and doing all of the, the functions associated with running Wikipedia. Um, it's a really astounding model that it is a large community. Um, if you want to understand Wikipedia, you have to understand it's the 100,000 people who are contributing to Wikipedia who really make that happen. Of the people in the office, none of them is directly involved with anything relating to the content that you see on the website. They're indirectly related in certain ways, but when you look and you see, if you go to the front page of English Wikipedia and you see what's the, the featured article of the day, that's all chosen by the community, the design of the page, everything is done by the community. So it's a fairly remarkable model um, that breaks a lot of assumptions about the ways that we need to work to create content and also the amount of money that it takes to create um, usable knowledge for people. So today we have uh, 16 million articles across 270 different languages. Now for me this 270 number is a bit exaggerated. I usually, uh, that's the official number of how many projects have somehow started. Um, I usually like to restrict it to the number of projects that have at least 1,000 entries. Um, and today that's 199, maybe 200, it depends on uh, where, the, where they've been busy in a couple of the languages that are uh, racing to be the 200th to 1,000. So the other 70 languages are, they have less than 1,000 articles, and so they may only have 20, they may have 50, they may have 300. They're a little bit too small for me to feel like they're really successful in launch, but still, 199 languages, not bad. Um, and this includes, you know, over a million in English, German, and French, um, over 500,000 in several other languages. Um, it's gotten to be really, really big. One of the interesting languages that um, people are always uh, asking me about is what about Chinese? Uh, Chinese is one of the most important languages in the world, obviously, uh, but we have a lot of problems with censorship in China. So we were completely banned in China for about three years. Uh, just before the Olympics, they opened up a lot of different websites, including the BBC for the first time. Uh, Wikipedia, I shouldn't say for the first time, but they opened up the BBC that had been blocked for some time. Uh, they opened Wikipedia, so they allowed people to access Wikipedia. Um, and so the situation today is that Wikipedia is accessible in all languages in China, except they filter certain pages, the pages that they're uptight about, um, and they're exactly the ones you would think. Uh, they're uptight about Tiananmen Square, uh, they're uptight about uh, Falun Gong, they're uptight about Taiwan, the Nobel Peace Prize is their recent uh, thing they're a bit uh, agitated about. Um, but it's very interesting. So in China, in, in every place around the world, Wikipedia is in the top 10 uh, most popular websites, except in China where we're ranked around number 50. And that's because we are, because as I said to the minister when I went to visit him, <clears throat> China's a little bit behind in terms of Wikipedia. Um, I didn't say we're behind in terms of China. Uh, he didn't really like that, but uh, he did say, well, you're number 50 in China out of 2 million Chinese websites, so it's not so bad. I said, yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> but one of the funny things uh, that has, has happened is, uh, you know, we, we are not very well known in China. China is one of the few places that I've gone and I've spoken to college students who had not heard of Wikipedia, even though they had heard of Google, YouTube, and so forth. Um, and somebody sent me this slide. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a menu from Beijing. 
Um, and as you can see, one of the things on offer is fried special Wikipedia. Um, turns out this is not unique. Here's another one. Uh, Wikipedia fried with eggs. So somebody sent me one of these and they said, you know, Jimmy, what, what does this mean? And I said, I have no idea. I said, but I know who will know. I'll, I'll, I'll send an email to the, uh, the Chinese Wikipedians and somebody will tell me what this means. So I sent an email and they emailed back and said, Jimmy, we have no idea. <laughs> um, beef brisket in Wikipedia flavor. We have the Wikipedia bread company in Dalian. I had some bread from there, it's quite nice. Um, so the closest thing that we figured out is that just before the Olympics, uh, they knew a lot of foreigners would be coming. So a lot of the restaurants whose menus were previously only in Chinese were in a desperate scramble to translate their menus so all the foreigners who were coming uh, could read the menu. And so probably they just went to a search engine and typed the name of the food item. And of course, if you search anything on the internet, the first thing that comes up is Wikipedia. So they just wrote down Wikipedia. That's our theory. Stir-fried Wikipedia. I like the spicy food, so I'll have the stir-fried Wikipedia with pimento. I have no idea, really, honestly. It's quite interesting. Turns out these are not, it's not just the same characters being translated over and over and over as Wikipedia. It's all different kinds of food. They, they're not quite sure what Wikipedia is in China, um, but it's some kind of food stuff. So I've been saying, if we, if we don't manage to make it into the top 10 uh, in China, I may have a new business model for Wikipedia. We'll open a restaurant in China and make some money that way. So uh, one of the things to, to look at when we think about Wikipedia as a completely global phenomenon um, and we try to get our heads around what does this mean for all the different places in the world, it's interesting to ask the question, how does Wikipedia differ in different languages around the world? And what does that mean for education, for learning? What can we learn about culture? Um, and we did an, an analysis um, a, a couple of years ago now, it's a little bit out of date, a year and a half I think. Uh, and this is a, a listing of the most popular pages. So it turns out the content of Wikipedia is very similar across all. In terms of what the community of authors is interested in, it tends to be quite similar. But in terms of what readers are interested in, there are some interesting variations in different places around the world. Now I know this is a little hard to read, but I'll just tell you that from left to right, it's English, Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Russian, and Spanish. Uh, these, are, these are the languages that we looked at. Um, and there's some really interesting things here. So if you take a look at Japanese, for example, you'll see that, that big green bar, pop culture. And if you know anything about Japan, this makes perfect sense. The Japanese do love pop culture. They love American and English pop culture. They, have their, they loved, you know, Japanese pop culture. It's a really, really big part of life in Japan. Their consumption and interest in popular culture is very, very high. So that one makes a lot of sense. Um, if you look a little further on there, uh, you'll see that the Germans are most interested in geography. I'm not sure if this is a good thing. I don't make that joke when I'm in Germany. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the other thing to notice is that sex is very popular in, in every, it's in, it's in the top, uh, in, in all of the, the places except for France and Spain, which is a bit interesting. I didn't really understand this, uh, and then somebody pointed out to me, it's because the French and the Spanish are actually having sex, <laughs> and we're all just reading about it on the internet, so. So anyway, this is fun to look at. I find it really fascinating to see what's popular in different languages. If we drill down a little deeper, it's actually the kinds of things you would expect. Um, people are very, very interested in their local politics. Uh, they want to get information about um, what is going on uh, in, with their local government. Um, and I think this is a really important role that Wikipedia plays uh, in terms of helping to educate people in a reasonable way. Um, one of the things that is uh, much in the news today in, in the United States, of course, because of the shooting over the weekend, is a culture of really violent discourse, really angry discourse, very partisan discourse. And I'm really proud of Wikipedia in that, in general, in Wikipedia, we strive for our classic neutral point of view, as we call it, um, where we really want to be a place where you come before you want to debate. It's the place where you come to say, what is this politician's position really? I don't want to hear it from an advocate uh, for them or against them. I just want the facts. I want the documentation. And Wikipedia tends to do a very, very good job of that and tends to have a very 
soothing and mild style of just describing the facts in a very calm way. I hope that that's having a positive impact on our culture because I think we desperately need much more thoughtful reflection and a lot less anger and vitriol in politics and, and basically in every aspect of life. So moving on a bit. Um, so all around the world we now have, uh, last month we had 408 million uh, people using the website. Uh, that's according to Comscore. Our internal server log numbers are actually a good bit higher than that. Um, and so we believe that we may be understated in Comscore, but those are the official numbers from an external party. Uh, the reason we might be understated in Comscore is that we are very, very popular in the developing world. And Comscore, by their nature, um, they're attempting to measure things for their customers involved in advertising, and that's really their, their focus. They can't really afford to invest. It's not any fault of theirs. They can't really afford to invest in really measuring the market, uh, really measuring internet usage in very poor places. It just doesn't make sense for them. But we think we're very, very strong in those places because those are the places where, um, for one thing, in many places, we're the first really big website that is comprehensive in a language, and that's really important. Um, and then second, a lot of people all around the world are using English or French or some other language that they know as a secondary language uh, to get information and knowledge. So one of the interesting questions to look at is, um, who is writing Wikipedia? Um, when we think about this kind of um, amazing impact on the world, 408 million people a month um, all across uh, the world, um, it's important to know who the Wikipedians are. Uh, one of the reasons that it's important is when we think about young people, people who are just coming up into the world, um, this was a, a statement on Twitter. Uh, it turns out this woman is a school teacher, and she says, uh, yesterday I asked one of my students if she knew what an encyclopedia is, and she said, is it something like Wikipedia? Um, and so certainly for young people, if you, if you have the idea of an encyclopedia as dusty books on the shelves, that's us, we're old people now. For them, you need to find something out. You, you hear on the radio, uh, gee, something has happened in Armenia, and you think, where the hell's Armenia? I, I'm, you know, I'm in eighth grade, I vaguely might have heard of that. Yeah, they go and they Google and they look and they go, oh, Armenia, I see where it is, I see what's going on there. Um, it's become really, really important in our culture, and I think it's really important to think about who the Wikipedians are, who's writing this stuff. So by the numbers, a little bit of data here. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, demographic data. This is from a self-reported survey on the site. There may be some problems with self-reported surveys and so on, but it's really the, the data that we have. Uh, it's 100, 130,000 readers and contributors answered the survey, though, so it's pretty comprehensive. So for the contributors, 87% male. Um, that's not really a good thing. Uh, this is something that we do have a problem with, um, and we think there's a few reasons for it. So first of all, uh, it's, it has to do with, uh, I believe, we are also restricted to uh, computer geeks who are contributing uh, far more than we would like to be. Many times if you click on edit in Wikipedia, what should be a really easy process of adding and, and changing some information, you see these editing codes, and particularly if there's a table in the article or a template, um, it can be quite intimidating for someone who uh, is not a computer geek. And it turns out computer geeks are mostly men for reasons outside of my control. And um, so that's a problem because we know, yes, we're excluding a lot of women, but we're also excluding, uh, for example, my father who uh, loves uh, muscle cars from the 60s. That's his big passion. He knows as much about it as anybody. Um, and if he clicks on edit to try to edit something about the 68 Mustang, um, He's just going to say, you know, I don't know how to do this. This looks scary. I'm afraid I'm going to break something. So one of the things we want to do is make the editing process easier. Uh, the average age of our contributor is 26. Uh, somebody told me I should stop saying 26 because another survey said 27. We're very pedantic, I have to tell you. Um, so 26 or 27, you choose. Um, and about double the number of uh, the percentage of PhDs in our community relative to the general public. So what, what does that mean? That does not mean that Wikipedia is mostly written by PhDs. It does mean that we're a geekier crowd than normal, um, which is really important. Um, somebody made this really great uh, Venn diagram showing who the Wikipedians are. Um, we're the people here at the intersection between intelligence, obsession, and lots of free time. Um, <laughs> Uh, people get very, very obsessed about Wikipedia, um, and we have a really wonderful and amazing community whose overriding passion beyond anything else is to get it right. Um, and they can be incredibly pedantic, incredibly uptight about it. We also have problems. We have lots of people on the site who aren't part of the core community who are trying to just sort of goof around and stuff, and we have to deal with that. Uh, but the core community is really amazing. So now, quickly, I have a, a video just to introduce some of the people to put a bit of a human face on... Uh, 
who the Wikipedians are. And we didn't test the audio uh, before I came up here, so who knows what's going to happen. But here we go. If you have knowledge, why well, you must keep it by yourself? You must share it. I think. I liked that the purpose of this website didn't say website, didn't say wiki, didn't say internet. It just said free knowledge for everyone in their own language. When a community is open, it's really made of those who, who dare taking this invitation. And this is an invitation. Of course, you don't have to take an invitation, but it, there is an invitation out there in an edit button to say, come be part. What you know is as important as what we know. You know, you're giving education to people, and not just any people, but the whole of the world. So I feel great by contributing to an encyclopedia that is accessible to virtually everyone in the whole world. It's just making yourself happy by helping others. That's it. Because I want to be happy, I help others. You're working together with so many different people from so many different cultures, and uh, it's just amazing. The thing about it for me, what it's really about, it's just really sweet people. Uh, you know, we've got all these really sweet people who are just, they get online and they're typing, and instead of yelling at each other or just having a conversation or reading about gossip or whatever, they're trying to build something that everybody else will find useful. I just think it's really sweet, really nice people. So, um, my mic, yep. Uh, so that's a little bit about the Wikipedians. Uh, now I'm gonna go very briefly uh, into talking about what's beyond the encyclopedia and some of the things that I see coming next and some of the things that I'm working on. Uh, so the idea is that the encyclopedia is just the start. So as I said earlier, I talked about all the things that Wikipedia is not. Um, and when we think about an encyclopedia, and you go into a traditional library and you look for the encyclopedia, it's a set of books about this big, A through Z, uh, A through Z, I guess you say here. Um, I have to translate my talk. Um, and um, uh, But if you think about the library, the library is much, much bigger. Uh, there's a huge wide range of things that people might collaborate on. And this is the concept of Wikia, uh, which is my new project, um, which is to build the rest of the library, every kind of book or work that people might want to work together on. So if we think about what this is, uh, when you think about a well, Wikipedia entry, this is the Wikipedia entry for Twilight the Novel. Um, it's exactly what you would expect. It's a very neutral uh, summary of the, art of, the, of the novel and its cultural impact and so on and so forth. Um, whereas at Wikia, we have the Twilight Wiki, uh, which has 875 entries all about Twilight. And so it's a place where people dig really, really deep into all kinds of topics. Um, most of the things that people are doing at Wikia are uh, entertainment and gaming. So we're starting in really strong in pop culture. Um, so we have all these kind of video game wikis, we have Twilight Wiki. Um, but we're also branching out into new areas, uh, things like the recipes wiki. So here we have 43,000 recipes that people have contributed and they can go in and edit and discuss and do all kinds of things. And like Wikipedia, the real concept here is to build all of these things, every kind of book or work people might want to do, by just allowing the public to contribute, by allowing the community to come together um, in a positive way and try to build something. So we've got all these different tools and new tools and we're being really um, aggressive at Wikia as compared to Wikipedia at introducing different kinds of tools. One of the things about Wikipedia is that it's meant to be an encyclopedia. Um, it's a very serious project, and so you wouldn't have things like you would have in a magazine or sort of a, a more of a free form thing. So at um, Wikia, people do things like top 10 lists. What are the top 10 episodes of Seinfeld ever? Um, well, that's very subjective, and they vote on it and so on, and they come up with their opinion, and they write some amusing things. If you try to do this at Wikipedia, the Wikipedians would say, where's your source? Uh, do you have a reliable source for that? Who says these are the top 10? Uh, we're not qualified to really make that judgment. Do you have a professional critic or some person like this? Whereas at Wikia, they would just say, oh, well, we decided, and that's, that's what we're doing because we're just publishing something. And what's interesting to watch here is how culture is being impacted by the internet and, and the internet is impacted by culture. And one of my favorite examples is the TV show Lost. Um, so, uh, the, the TV show Lost is, uh, how many people here know the TV show Lost? Okay, loads of people. Uh, how many of you actually understood it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, uh, the, the, 
the writers of the show, so it's, it's per perhaps uh, arguably the most complicated television show ever created with many, many characters, a huge ensemble cast, many different storylines, many different timelines, um, and it's quite puzzling. And they deliberately hid a lot of complicated information in the show as a reward for serious viewers. And so they, they deliberately put a lot in there uh, to reward a serious fan community online. And so there came a point when the writers were stumped. They were looking to make a reference to Canada uh, and nobody was exactly sure how they'd done it in the past. This is from a magazine article where they'd interviewed the head writer. Um, and um, so uh, they looked in Lostpedia. So Lostpedia is a wiki at Wikia uh, created by the community. Uh, they, they, throughout this, the lifetime of the series, they, every time a show would air, <clears throat> they would obsessively watch it, record every minute detail. They recorded every theory they could find about what was going on. Uh, they, they were just, it's an astounding site where a group of really passionate people dug into this and knew more about it in many cases than the creators of the show because they were so much more obsessive. They couldn't go back. It wasn't practical, uh, Carlton Q said, to go back and rewatch all the old episodes, but it was really practical to just look up Canada in Lostpedia and see what it said. Uh, does anybody here have any idea what it is about Canada and Lost? No, so far, uh, nobody has known this. Obviously, you're not reading enough of Lostpedia. Um, it turns out that every time somebody mentions Canada, that's a signal that they're lying, um, which I find to be true in the real world as well. <laughs> I don't even know what that joke means. It always gets a laugh, but um, yeah. So it was something that, I, and I haven't yet figured out whether this was something that the fans noticed that was unintentional and then the writers saw that the fans had noticed it and built on it. They clearly became aware of it, but I, I was, well, anyway, it's all very interesting to see uh, that Lost, I just recently saw uh, someone uh, sort of reviewing the, the end of Lost and so on and saying, uh, you know, that the, the, the degree to which the Lost writers took account of fan input was unprecedented and that in the end the show was almost a wiki in and of itself, that it was a co-creation in a completely novel way. I think that's very interesting and I think that has um, a lot of implications for the future when we think about all kinds of things. Education in particular is one where I think we should really start to think about how do we co-create educational experiences um, with learners um, in, in terms of getting them up to speed because one of the skills they need to learn is not just the, the um, the, the dates of all the kings, uh, but they need to learn how to create information, how to do research, how to learn is really important today. So I'm going to close now. I've got one more uh, fun little video, and then we're going to do the Q&A session. Uh, but here we go with another video. Uh, no, I don't have superpowers at all. No. You could, you could totally do it. I pushed the button and saved the text. Ooh. <laughs> It was uh, exciting. You just changed Wikipedia. You just added your own contribution to Wikipedia. I read an article in The Guardian about this online encyclopedia which everybody can contribute to. And I thought, oh, maybe I can contribute too as well. I edited it the first time and I think I got addicted to it. I don't get paid anything. I just do it for, you know, something to do in my free time. That's it. You may start doing it for an idea, because you believe in it, but you end up with friends, you end up with uh, lovers, you end up with uh, wonderful discussions, you end up with new ideas, you end up with the new books you're going to write. You're not writing the article alone. You write a piece and somebody else goes like, hey, I have more, and together you can create articles that are pages long, which you can't buy yourself. Then you have success. You always see, okay, what I've done was successful. And this is one of, this is great because, so editing is, is a great feeling every time you do it. As I say, when I read about Wikipedia, I decided that this is maybe where I would fit in. And I did. Awesome. Great. All right, super. So now, oh, thank you. Uh,